I've seen the film and I've been very aware of the audience around me and people, they have very gut-like reactions to the movie where, you know, as soon as she's going to eat something else, people are like, no, 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 you know, it's, it's kind of funny to look at because I don't feel anything like that since I'm so close to it and I don't know the tricks and all that. But I think there's a very uncomfortable, unsettling tone to the film that is also very dark. So I wouldn't say horror. Yeah, I would say maybe some horror elements, but definitely not a horror film. Carlo had chosen it and that was his first choice. And of course, yeah, that house has so much character to it. Even things from bringing certain color, that there was these glass panels in the house, to obviously tons of different reflections and ways to make her feel like she's secluded in this glass box, but also from shooting from the outside, you can also connect the outside through reflections. And uh, it definitely added a whole other element for me too, to be able to use those reflections in a way. We really wanted to do some extreme wide shots but there's the river there and there's complication but if we could you know like pull out to just seeing all of these like trees and just the one little house there it would have been the baby room is supposed to feel not like a normal baby room to sort of signify that there's this disconnection between her and the fact that she's pregnant and her and this baby so Erin had this great idea to do these panel gels on the on the window which I think adds a ton to that scene obviously because it would be you know a somewhat basic looking room but it also has this sort of violent red color that is just it's it's a signifier I think it you know it doesn't feel childlike it feels threatening From the beginning, we wanted to, I mean, a big thing that we talked about was these objects that she has and how we could bring them to life and use macro lenses or I actually had the idea of shooting everything on Master Prime so everything was very clean and, and perfect and then maybe shooting all of the, the close-up shots of the objects on vintage lenses so it could give some sort of special glow or anything and we tested it. And we actually found that shooting all the objects with you know, 100 mil and diopter on the master primes, having more detail there to see all of these little textures and everything brought these objects to life in a way that this marble becomes, as soon as you see it that close up, it almost becomes an ocean or some sort of like galaxy. And it, it just adds to her desire for it and uh, makes it a little bit more surreal. So it goes from quite normal lens focal light ranges to these extreme close-ups, only when it's from her perspective looking at these objects. We, we did use a lot of um, 4K HMIs. I mean, not a lot, we probably had two. Um, and then, like I said, if it was the middle of the day and I knew that there was no way I could push as much light into the room as there was outside, um, I would sort of close curtains off and then um, use frames outside to cut direct light so that the, even the curtains were not getting hit with parts of sun. So everything felt very even and cohesive. Um, we used a lot of light mats at night. Um, the scene where she is on the ground and there's that really blue moonlight, you know, we lit it with a 4K uh, book light from outside. Um, we had we called the MVP of the shoot a uh, two-foot quasar with a uh, two-by-three muslin that was, by the end of it, had like cuts and stains on it. It was, we used it in every scene because it was just the perfect amount of like wrap and eyelight for Haley. And it was just very subtle and through the muzz, it was, it was just very subtle, but we, we called it the MVP because we literally used it in like every single close-up. <laughs> you know, you can sometimes have you can create a, a top light in a room that where there's no window or something, and that's sort of unnatural to the space, but you can make it look natural. Um, I, I wouldn't say that we did that on Swallow because there's already sort of this, a little bit of surreal fantasy element to it, and we, but we at the same time didn't want to stray away from that too much to make it feel like this is not real, really possible or really happening because it is very much a real disease and you know it's you know it's noting to mental health and things like that so we wanted to keep it within an, a natural world but you know you could 
we did a couple of things like when we see the objects um there is a little bit of like a point really pinpointed light through the marble that you could see this light on Haley when she's holding up the marble so there is a little bit of this this stuff that we did in the ice as well we backlit it so it's kind of glistening and it almost looks like melting glaciers um but it still feels realistic enough um you know i think in like music videos and commercials you can get away with it way more you can have some completely unmotivated hard light or strobe or things like that. So I love doing both. I mean, it's super fun to just come into a space and have to completely rethink how you light it in a, in a completely original way um, versus staying very na natural to more narrative work. But This movie, because there were so many lock-offs, allowed for us to get a little more specific if we wanted to. Other times, if there's more handheld or something, you sort of need to light for a space so that the actors can move through it easier. Um, it depends that who the actor is that you're working with, if they're okay with having more specific direction, which Haley was. Um, but then there was times where we knew that Haley was just, you know, there's that handheld shot in the room that goes 360, and I just knew that Haley was just going to release. She would constantly be giving us above and beyond. We, we were even expecting everyone at the monitor would often be in tears or, you know, she would sometimes just do something unexpected. Like, for example, she has uh, the dirt on her hands after she's gardening and she went to wipe her tear and that dirt just smeared across her face and me and Carla were not expecting that. So we both just looked at each other at the monitor. So I, I wanted to give her some freedom in some ways and not be too restrictive because it was an emotional role and, you know, sometimes you got to like step back from cinematography and and allow the actor the space. So it sort of depends on each scene and um, and what's more important, you know, visual style, lighting, tone, or performance. I think it varies. Well, it definitely becomes a little, well, while still trying to keep the cinematography cohesive mm -hmm. and stylized, it definitely sort of shifts into something a little more drama, a little less thriller. Um, there's, it's more emotive. There's not so much of this um, mystery to it, although there is, but it just becomes much more of a human connection instead of her connecting to these objects. Um, so, you know, that came with some more handheld and things like that, that allowed a little more freedom for the actors, which is, you know, like I said, sometimes earlier on, it's more about the set and the style and her being placed within this set so she actually kind of looks like a set piece where it's, it's almost so perfect that it doesn't feel real and then later on it everything should feel much more real because it's, it's she's no longer in that world and that's when the colors start changing there's much more clean neutral tones in the house um, and when she goes to the motel you know there's much more greens and warm lamps and she, had, she starts to lose control of her surroundings and the, the colors start to mix in, in a way. And especially when she ends up at the mall later on, there's just reds and greens and blues. There's, there's everything as a sense of her losing control over her world and just being you know, a normal person in this uncontrollable space. What I loved about that motel was that there was just mirrors everywhere. So it was fun to play with that. And also, you know, it kind of allowed having this one really tiny room, all these scenes in there, you get more options that way. And of course, you know, like Haley having multiple reflections, playing on that idea. Um, but then, you know, we played with some mixed color temps and some neon lights coming in. And that's, it was, you know, it's her first, it, as soon as she leaves the house, she's in that outside world, like I said, so colors start to mix and she has less control over things and um, so it's, you know, it's greens and grittiness and it just feels uncomfortable and gross and you can just sense that she's in danger because of these, all these mixed temps and yeah, but I love a motel scene, I think, like, everywhere. <laughs>